Hello folks, better late than never, I'd like to present this video showcase of the five entries to the MM Basic Programming Challenge 2022. Please note that unless specified otherwise, any opinions expressed in this video are my own and not necessarily representative of the views of the other judges. The rules for the challenge and links to the source code for all the entries are provided in the description below. In summary, the rules required each entry to be under 5 kilobytes in size, including any additional files, audio and graphical assets. The entries had to run on the Colormax Mite 1 or 2, Pico Mite or MM Basic for Windows, with no additional hardware. As it turned out, all the entries but one were for the Colormax Mite 2, though they will also probably work on MM Basic for Windows with minimal tweaks. The final entry was for the Pico Mite VGA, and unfortunately had to be disallowed from the prizes, more on that later, but it still greatly impressed the judges. And now, without further preamble, on to the entries. First up is Groovy Trivia by Mindwarp. Whilst ostensibly a simple quiz game, it uses clever programming to inflate the Color Maximite 2's standard fonts to provide a flashy user interface. Some of the spelling is rather original, and the Apple II was released in 1977, not 1971, but overall I like this entry, though I thought it could, would be much improved by some sound. Ported to the PicoMite VGA and with some hardware buttons, it could be used as the basis for a standalone quiz machine. I show the code since 25% of the score for the challenge was given for code clarity. I find it difficult to say anything much about other people's code without coming across as overly judgmental, but within the restrictions of the competition and the bytes that can be saved without using indenting, I found this to be a pretty readable entry. It is perhaps worth mentioning that it could have been even shorter by using single line if statements, the increment command, and omitting the unnecessary loop variables from next statements. Our second entry is a Robot 8 SSTV decoder by Volhout. This program uses the PicoMite programmable I.O. system to decode slow scan television signals. Slow scan television is a picture transmission method used mainly by amateur radio operators. If you are interested in finding out more, then follow the links in the comments. All three judges were very impressed by this program, but unfortunately, after some soul searching, it had to be disallowed from the prizes because it requires use for supplemental hardware amplifier circuit. Volhout received a consolation prize, so hopefully wasn't too disappointed by this decision. As the video continues, viewers of a nervous disposition may wish to look away for 30 seconds, as the footage of the hardware setup is shaky and poorly lit. As Dr. McCoy might have said, Damn it, Jim, I'm a software engineer, not a cameraman. In my test setup, I used a PicoMite game, the PCB in the acrylic enclosure, with a breadboard amplifier plugged into one of its controller ports. The SSTV signal was provided from a YouTube video being played from a mobile phone. Note that whilst the video also shows the SSTV pictures on the phone, it is only the audio signal that is being sent to and processed by the PicoMite. The decoder is capable of showing the data in several different formats, as shown in this composite. The images in the top left are those from the YouTube video supplying the audio signal, which you can also hear as background noise. The other three quadrants show output from the decoder. Note that the actual decoder doesn't show the output simultaneously. That's a piece of video editing trickery.
The code is succinct with the hard part being done by the compiled PIO code, which is clearly commented in the first few lines of the program. The rest of the program is relatively simple and nicely indented. The use of GoTo and GoSub is somewhat anachronistic in a modern BASIC program, but perhaps in keeping with the era of slow scan television as a technology. That said, I understand that the International Space Station does occasionally broadcast SSTV signals. We now come to our third place winner, Fractal Mountains by Lodovic, based on an original program by Matthew Timmerman and published in Compute Magazine way back in August 1987. This program renders a series of fractal landscapes, a process which, for the benefit of this video, I have sped up by 20 times. I found this program attractive and interesting and wonder what optimizations might be possible both in BASIC and by selective use of C subroutines. The code is clear and well structured. In second place, and for the second year running, was Tim D, this time with a novel game named Factor Fracture. In this game, the player guides a calculator around the map, shooting the pink boxes in an attempt to find four keys that will allow them to progress to the next level. They are hindered in this effort by enemy numbers, which can be shot and destroyed, but only if their number is equal to the player's current factor. If an enemy's number is not equal to, but is instead a multiple of the player's factor, then their number will be divided down accordingly, but they will not be destroyed. The player can change their factor by picking up new factors which are also hidden in the pink boxes. Requiring a combination of both manual and mental dexterity I found this game rather difficult to play. I'd suggest that this was down to the use of the keyboard rather than a gamepad, but that may well be a case of a bad workman blaming his tools. Probably I'm just getting old. Nevertheless, I was impressed by the originality and appearance of this game and by the use of the Color Maximite speech synthesis capabilities for both speech and sound effects.
Out. Level 1. Unlock. Out. Game over. The code is relatively clear, though the use of some very small functions and subroutines with two and three letter names in order to save a few precious bytes does add a layer of obfuscation. Overall, a very strong entry that is well deserving of its second place. And finally, our winner, Stellar Battle in the Seven Green Hills Zone by VeggiePete, the sequel to a trilogy of games that Pete wrote for last year's programming challenge. This is a rendition of the classic Battle Zone game, where the player drives a tank around an abstract 3D vector graphics landscape, trying to destroy other tanks. In addition to the smooth 3D graphics, the game also has good, if limited, sound effects. As you can see from the video, I was pretty useless. I think larger, brighter dots on the radar display would have made it significantly less frustrating. That, plus the lack of a graphical effect to accompany the destruction of an enemy, are my only significant gripes. The code is pretty impenetrable, with VeggiePete pulling out all the compression tricks in order to keep within the 5 kilobyte limit. At least, unlike last year's entry, there were some new line characters scattered for readability. Only one point separated first and second places, and I think it was the fact that this game represented the first non-demo use of the Color Maximite's 3D graphics that clinched victory for VeggiePete. I offer him my congratulations and look forward to seeing what else he produces in the future. And with that, we come to the end of this year's challenge. I'd like to thank our five bold contestants and my fellow judges and prize contributors, Bill McKinley, Lance Benson and Mick Gullifson. As always, a big thank you to Jeff Graham, Peter Mather and all others involved in the creation and promotion of MM Basic. I'm going to go and have a long lie down now, and if, as seems likely, I forget the trauma of having to produce this video, then perhaps we will do it all again in 12 months time. Until then, thank you for watching, and if you have any comments, good or bad, then please leave them below.